You know, I remember I was about the fourth grade in elementary school, and then they were like, hey, everybody show up into the auditorium. It's band day, B-A-N-D. And like, it's like, okay, we're going to learn what instruments we, we get to play. So we all run in. We're fourth graders. We're sweaty. And, 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 and we all run to what? To the drum set. Like all 400 and something of us were going to be drummers. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't wait to get those sticks in my hands. But, you know, the reality is we weren't all made to be drummers. We weren't. I played trumpet for three years. And mercifully, somebody who knew better said, stop playing trumpet. <laughs> but you know what it took? It took people with the skill, the true musicians, the true teachers, the true leaders, to show those 400 and something students where their giftings actually were. So guess what? We weren't all drummers. But it wasn't until the leadership was able to step in and, and show us our roles, our talents, our giftings, that any harmony, any music was ever going to be made. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, is, is the gift that Jesus gave to the church in the five-fold ministry. We're walking, we're continuing to walk through books of the Bible, we're in the book of Ephesians, and, and this church was founded on the, on the command, on the precept of the five-fold ministry. So we finally get to Ephesians 4, 11, and down to 16, that's going to talk about the five-fold ministry. And, and, and that's the importance is if we just all huddle together without knowing our role or our, 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 our gifting, then we're really not efficient. There's really no harmony. There's really no music in the kingdom until we come to understand the gifts that God's giving us. It's like building the body of Christ is done by the, Christ, by the body's body builders. And that's the five-fold ministry. You know, the one thing the Lord put on my heart this week was that God calls you to walk in completion like Jesus. He is the perfect standard of spiritual maturity. And until we get to the point of perfection, completion, or teleos in the Greek, it's important that we continue to work towards becoming mature in the body of Christ. You know, that maturity only comes through the word of the Lord. It's not your emotions. It's not your opinion. It's not anything else. It's the word of the Lord. So I would ask that we stand as the body and let's read that word that brings us into spiritual maturity. It brings us into blessing. It brings us into provision. It brings us into restoration and renewal. So we'll, sing, we'll stand together and we'll read as the body from Ephesians 4.11 and we'll begin. And he himself gave some to the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Like, would it have killed Paul to put a period in there somewhere? I mean, like, I get the exuberance. I get the joy. But it's like calm. It's like, come on, Paul. Like, give the body a break. Give us a period here and there. But that's the five-fold ministry. That's what we're called to do, to come into completion and to perfection and to teleos. You know, so what I want to do is the five-fold is what we're talking about today. And that is, that is the kingdom's body builders. That's the personal trainers for the body of Christ. You know, coming into the body, we'll give a little spiritual anatomy lesson. And from Colossians 1, 20, 23, coming into the body, it says, and through him, he's talking about Jesus, God reconciled everything to himself. You see, the only way humanity could be reconciled to God the Father was through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. There's no other way. So through that, God was able to reconcile everything to himself. 
In that reconciliation, he made peace and everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. Now, y'all, this next sentence, just, this is so beautiful. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. I want to challenge you, your parents, your friends, your marriage, in any relationship have you ever had, have you ever stood before someone else in the natural and been without a single fault? Only in the eyes of God the Father do we come to him without a single fault. Only because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. So when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become a member of the body of Christ. You become a member of the body. And the body is reflected in the local church. This church is the body of Christ. I know it's a location off of Highway 67, Tidwell Exit. That's the natural. The spiritual, the supernatural, this is the body of Christ. Why? Because we're all members of that body. See, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we are all share the same spirit. You see, this is what happens when churches go through some strife. They're not operating in the same spirit, the one spirit, the Holy Spirit. It turns into our emotions and our feelings when we become soul-led, emotion-led. Well, I don't like worship. I don't like that song. That third song could have been done better. Well, I'm going to go find another place that does a third song better. You know what? That's your soul speaking. That's your emotion speaking. You know, you don't like something that the, that the, the natural church is doing, but, but instead of praying it into agreement in the supernatural, you start attacking it in the natural. And that's the problem. This is what the five folds here for. It's to bring the body into that state of completion. Because you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ only because our emotions are different, our opinions are different, our clothes are different, our likes are different. The only thing we have in common is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So you have the body, the body of Christ. So Jesus is the head of this body. Jesus is the head of this church. Jesus is the head of every Christian church. And Colossians 1 tells us, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness dwell is that state of teleos, is that state of completion, is that state of perfection. Can we agree that Jesus is the teleos man? Can we agree that Jesus is perfection, that he's completion? He is the head of the body. But you see, in God's plan, he doesn't want all fullness to dwell only in Jesus. The goal is for head to toe, head to toe. So we're all members of the body, and some of us are toes. Some of us are different parts of the body, and we all work together only because of the, the Holy Spirit. But until every part dwells in fullness, then we don't come into completion as the body. The, the goal of, of church is not to just keep meeting on Sundays until for eternity. The goal of this body is to become the bride so Jesus can come back to claim his bride. We're here for a short time. And I can tell you, people ask, are we in the end times? Are we in the end times? Can I tell you with 100% certainty? Yes. Yes. Every second that passes, you're closer to the end time. 
you're closer to the end time. Every second that passes that we're not striving for perfection to become teleos, we're one second lost in becoming closer to the perfected body, the perfected bride of Christ. This is why the fivefold was given to the body. It's easy to, to just become religious and become legalistic and say, well, we've got to become perfected and holy and we've got to present ourselves as holy living sacrifices, as Romans 12 tells us. So it's like, well, how do we do that? Like, how do we go from inspired scripture to practical application? Like, I get I need to lose weight, but I need somebody to tell me how to do it. I need a coach, a personal trainer. That's where the fivefold comes in. You see Ephesians 4.11, and it says, And he himself, this is Jesus, this is not a mega church pastor, this is not a business planner, this isn't somebody with a pretty good idea, this is Jesus himself. He gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And you know, the, the translation from Greek, when we get to English, the word some is like, eh, kind of passive, like suggestive. I'm going to give you some M&Ms. I'm going to give you some, some attention. But you see, when, when we look, the word some is actually meant to be an emphatic word. So if we substituted some for a word like indeed, indeed. So if we read it and it said, and he himself, Jesus, indeed gave apostles, indeed gave prophets. He indeed gave evangelists. Make no mistake about it. He indeed gave pastors and indeed he gave teachers. This is not a suggestion. Jesus didn't just have a pretty decent idea. And say, I'm going to give some of this, I'm going to give some of that. Indeed, I am giving you this gift. You see the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, when you come receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, and you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes with gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's not if you have gifts, it's which gifts do you have. So those are gifts from the Holy Spirit. You see the fivefold? That's a gift. Jesus gave the gift of people to people for people. Amen. That's your fivefold ministry. Your fivefold ministry is not to be elevated. Actually, your fivefold ministry, oh, we're, they're, they're on the ground and they're, they're building the foundation beneath their life. They're helping you understand the word of the Lord. They're helping you to understand what it is to love with compassion the way Jesus did. They're down on their knees in the dirt and, and, they're, and they're, they're trying to lead apostolically and share prophetic words of encouragement. They're out there on their knees in the, in the, in the margins of society evangelizing, sharing the word of the Lord. They're not exalted like some man-made religion. That's the fivefold. The fivefold. Jesus gave the fivefold. The gift of people to people for people. So it's like, that's cool. But why do we really need? Why does the church need a fivefold? Like, can't we just go onto YouTube? There's got to be a website that we can sign up for. Because it's a lot less messy when you don't have people involved. Look, I learned years ago when the Lord moved me out of my career, short of retirement, and said, I want you to enter into men's ministry. You know what I found was the hardest part of men's ministry? the men, <laughs> right? But you know what? This is why we need the fivefold. We need it for correction, reflection, connection, and perfection. And I want to relate these to you. I thought it was neat that the Holy Spirit gave me four words that rhymed, but let me give you a scripture that goes with it. Correction from Ephesians 4, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Look, we all have to walk into submission to one another. We all have to walk in mutual submission. And if you walk in submission, then you're open for correction. If you're unteachable, then, there's no, then God can't do anything with you. All of us come into correction. And that's what the fivefold ministry, that's what the work has done. We all come from, with these sacred cows from old religions, from man-made doctrines. But in Bible studies on Thursday nights... That's where the correction comes. That's where correction comes. And, and, and ministering, well, this is what love looks like. Is it really? Is it sacrificial love or is it self-serving love? 
That's where correction comes through the fivefold ministry. The second is reflection. Like we got to shine Jesus. From Ephesians 4 again, come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Here we are again with the fullness. Where does the fullness dwell right now? In Jesus. Jesus is the perfect, complete teleos man. The fivefold ministry's job is to help get us all to reflect that nature of fullness in Christ. Connection from the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share. It causes growth of the body and the edification of itself in love. If we're not working together, if you decide you want to you go your own way or you want to do your own thing, that's cool. But in this body, the body doesn't function if you decide to, to be a toe and you sit over there on that microphone speaker. You're like, well, I'm a toe. And I'm cool. And the good thing about being departed from the body is I don't have to clip that old nail anymore. But you don't realize you're dead. You're dead, you're dead, you're dead. And the devil is looking at you because you've separated yourself from the, from the pack, from the church, from the body. And now you become not a toe, but a snack. But you see, it's not for the body to be here and go, oh, oh well, that's good for that old toe. Because the body suffers. The body suffers if we're not all working together. That's why the fivefold ministry was given by Jesus himself to the body for the body. And the last is perfection from, four, from uh, Ephesians 4 again. Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, the perfect man, the teleos. There's one way to God the Father, and that's through Jesus the Son. There's one way to perfection, completion, teleos. And that's through becoming in fullness as Jesus came. And Jesus gave the five-fold ministry to help the body get into that, that posture of completion, of fullness. You know, what, what, what the five-fold also does is it keeps the body in balance. Like God, God doesn't want you to be like a teenage boy in the gym with big, big, big biceps and little, little bitty skinny legs. Like that's not a healthy body. It's not a balanced body. But I will submit to you that a lot of churches, they look like that. They big, big, big on evangelism. And a little, 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 little on Bible teaching. You see, that's what happens when the church does not embrace the fivefold ministry. When the church is founded on, on the skill of one person. If he's a great evangelist, that's good. You're going to get some babies in there and you're going to serve milk. And did you know, that, did you know that, that people can survive about three days without water? And that you could survive about 21 days without food? And you could survive about two years without the other four gifts of the fivefold. What happens is, after those two years, you start understanding that something's lacking. Like we tell our kids for Christmas, we used to do this. We're like, everybody gets three gifts for Christmas. Look, they didn't care about gift one. They didn't care about gift two. What did they want? Where's gift three? So here's Jesus himself telling the body, I give you five gifts. Like I'm Jesus, and I'm telling you, I'm giving you five gifts. And if you show up somewhere, and you only see um, a, 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 an evangelist, you're going to start, what are you going to start wondering Where's those other four gifts you talked about? I mean, it's in the Bible, and you said it yourself. Like, where's those other four gifts? It's non negotiable to grow this body in the fivefold ministry. You know, the fivefold, the, the, the people God has ordained and predestined and assigned these people to, to, be, to serve in his body. And they're really just like, they're like coaches. Every good athlete, every good business person, every successful this and that, right? Everybody, you're per, they're, they're personal coaches. Quarterbacks have coaches, wide receivers, linebackers. And the team is only as effective as they're coached well. But you see, it's not the coach's job to be on the field. It's not the coach's job to throw the ball. It's the coach's job to equip the players to play the game. You see, like I wanted to be a quarterback, 
And thank goodness some coach said, you're too slow and you like hitting people more than you like throwing the ball. So I was coached into a position of linebacker and I was coached well. That's what the fivefold's here to do. It is to equip you for the work of ministry. So we say, well, what's this ministry work I keep hearing all about? I mean, like, what are we talking about? Let's get away from religiosity, institutionalization, and legalism, and let's talk practical application. Well, I'll give you some practical application. Straight from Jesus, Matthew 28. This is your work of ministry. This is why the fivefold is given as a gift to you. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How is Jesus with us to the end of the age? Through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So we've got this great gift of the Holy Spirit. What do we do with it? The fivefold is a gift given to the body to help bring that gift and lead the physical body and the church body into that posture of perfectness, completion. So it's like, oh, that's good, that's good. So what else does he have? Like what other kind of mystery we got? Well, let's go to Mark 16. And he said to them, this is Jesus. Let's not make any mistake. This is Jesus. And Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Like this is Jesus again saying, if y'all believe, who believes? These are the signs. And he says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, let me put a little asterisk for clarification. Jesus isn't saying, go pick up a snake and drink some poison. What Jesus is saying, that serpent, the devil, the one that showed up in the beginning... His head's been crushed. Genesis 3.15 has already told us that. He's been defeated. He's got no threat to you. The poison, those are curses spoken over you. Those are lies. Those are rumors. Those is gossip. Those are saboteurs in the body of Christ trying to destroy the body of Christ. If you're sharing anything but the word of the Lord and the truth based on the word of the Lord, you're lying. It's poison. And listen, I don't care what your goal is by sharing these lies and this gossip or even curses about people we don't know. For Christians, you're protected. That poison doesn't hurt you. So this is what the fivefold is here to do. This is what your coaches are here to do. Not to run the plays, not to pray all the time, not to baptize, not to marry, not to slay in the Spirit. It's to get you ready to do that. It's to teach you to do that. Are you ready? Are you ready to go and make disciples? Are you ready to baptize believers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to teach disciples to observe all things Jesus has commanded? Are you ready to preach the gospel to every creature? Are you ready to cast out demons in Jesus' name? Are you ready to speak with new tongues? Are you ready to lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover? That's the work of the ministry. That's what the fivefold's here to do. Now, I'm asking you, our commitment of the fivefold, of the elders, of the leadership of this church, is to make sure we always operate in the fullness of the fivefold. We don't want nobody to be that teenage boy in the gym with them big, big biceps and them little bitty legs. We want completion, perfection, teleos. Because I'm going to tell you, you see, 
The goal of coming into completion is to go from the body to the bride. And let me tell you, Jesus is not coming back. Jesus is coming back for his bride to be equally yoked with his bride. Jesus is not coming back to pick up some girl in the gutter who's drunk after a bachelorette party and just finished uh, running the streets. Like Jesus ain't coming back for her. Jesus ain't coming back licking his finger, washing her face. Ain't no groom ever going into the bride's room and put the dress and the makeup on her. This is our responsibility to bring ourselves, to, to submit ourselves as a sacrifice, as a holy living sacrifice. How do we get there? Through the gift that Jesus gave us in the fivefold. To bring ourselves into a posture of completion. Through the Holy Spirit, through the righteousness of God. So if you're thinking, I'm going to live my life like I want to live. At some point, Jesus is going to come down. He's going to clean us up and make us the bride. It ain't happening. God wants you to be equally yoked. Why wouldn't God expect his son to be equally yoked with his bride? The fivefold is here to make that happen. I want you to commit. I want you to commit in a reciprocating level that we're committed to you from the fivefold, the elders, and the leadership. Make a commitment to grow into spiritual maturity. You've got to grow into spiritual maturity. As bad as our 15-year-old wants to drive, he will not get those keys until he comes into physical maturity, intellectual maturity. All we would do is set him up for failure. If we're, if we're trying to push you into postures, we've all been called. And we all have an anointing. But do you have the character to carry the calling? I've seen a lot of people with an anointing from God and they've destroyed their lives and they've destroyed other people in their lives because they didn't yet have the character. And I want to tell you, it's not a criticism. God called me out. I was 26 years as a chief of police. God called me out four years shy of retirement and said, I want you to go. He said, you spent your whole career locking men up and I want you to spend the rest of your life setting them free. And I walked off that job with four years left in full pension retirement, and I walked away. But you know what God said? Mm. Don't talk to no men. Had I spoken and tried to minister to a man the day after I walked away, I would have destroyed their lives. I had the calling, I had the anointing, but I didn't have the character. So I'm asking you, the only way you're going to come into the status of, of, of spiritual maturity and to carry that calling with, that, with your uh, anointing is to grow your character through spiritual maturity. The fivefold is not here to be served. It's here to serve you and teaching you these ways. I want you to commit to resist the devil's temptation to lead you astray. I want you to commit to, to not allowing yourself to become that old toe sitting over there by yourself and bragging about yourself because you get to, you don't even got to clip that nail no more. And you don't even realize the devil is licking his chops because you separated yourself from the body. And it gets tempting when you get disgruntled or you get dissatisfied or somebody else is sitting in your chair. I'm going to go find another church with another chair until somebody takes that chair. Don't let the devil cause division. How do I stop that? Because you have authority over the devil. I'm asking you to embrace the Great Commission, to grow God's kingdom through ministry. And my big ask, I'm asking you guys, refuse to limit God to the box based on your current level of understanding. Guys, I hear so many times people start talking about, well, that ain't the way God works. That ain't the way God works. Where'd you see that? That ain't the way God works. And you know what I've tell them? You're right. He's never going to work that way for you. For you. Because you put the supreme God in a box based on your understanding. I'm asking you to not limit God to that box. I'm asking you to let him, to let him move in your life like you've been ordained to have that movement in your life. I'm asking you to stop worrying about what other people think and what other people say. I'm asking you to stop saying things about other people that God didn't put on your heart. If God puts something on your heart to go tell another brother or sister, you go tell that other brother and sister. If you got a problem with a brother and sister, Matthew 18 says, you go talk to that brother and sister. Let's be different. 
Let's be kingdom. Let's work towards perfection and completion like Jesus exemplifies. We want to walk around, oh, I'm like Jesus. I got me some Jesus. I got me some Jesus. Really? Where? Because I don't see it. I don't see it. The work of the fivefold is to get that Jesus shine, to get that Jesus out of you, to break that box. So when Byron shows up on Thursday with a butcher's vest and a big hat and a knife to serve the meat of the word, man, that's how we shine some Jesus. And our other fivefold, that's how you do some Jesus. So I want to ask our ministry leaders to come up as we close this out.